Hello, this is Chris Caring with True Plans, and we want to tell you a little bit about the four design principles that we follow uh, during any design meeting uh, or design session. The most important, number one, is the appearance, of course. It's got to look good. And in fact, it's got to look awesome. In some cases, we're upgrading the whole house, and in other cases, we're adding on, and we want to match existing. Either way, nothing can look like an addition. It has to look like it was always there, part of the original architecture or the upgraded architecture. So this process is known as architectural blending. And it's uh, the most important, number one, is appearance. Number two is we, we're always balancing these, by the way, is functionality. Every space serves some sort of function. Um, a hallway is functional, but hallways take up a lot of space. Depending upon your intended use of, uh, of a room, the functionality may have a greater weight than, for example, uh, trying to satisfy the appearance of, uh, of an open concept area. If you need the functionality of a bathroom, you're going to need to sacrifice some of that open floor space and uh, put in the functional bathroom. So that's an example of functionality. Uh, the third thing we always have to design around uh, of course, is building code. All the spaces need to be designed according to building code. This usually goes without saying, but while we're collaborating with homeowners and even interior designers, we find that most people are not aware of all the building codes. And so our process, uh, we, we guide the uh, design process according to code. So we guide the design with the code in mind. Number four, and I like to joke that it's on the smallest finger, it is the budget. We do have to design according to something that is feasible to build. Um, we can do anything as long as it meets the first three criteria of appearance, functionality, and code. But during uh, uh, the process, we, we realize that some designs are gonna cost more than others due to the complexity of the construction as well as the structural requirements. Uh, the location of a window, for example, um, you could pretty much put anywhere on the elevation unless it's interrupting a shear wall. Uh, we can certainly reassign shear wall and load bearing walls to accommodate the design, but it's part of our routine to bring the structural considerations in during the design decision making process because it will cost more to reassign shear wall. So these are the four things, appearance, functionality, code, and budget. These are the four things we are balancing that you'll hear us going back and forth to balance during any design session.